Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm continuing here. Chapter six. Chapter six is the chapter we included most of our chemical calculations. In this chapter, not only we're going to talk about what chemistry calculation is about, and but also we're going to calculate all kinds of chemical chemical amounts, and also we're going to relate that and extend that calculation into chemical equations, into reactants and the products, and also into getting from the amount of the reactant, get the amount of products, or from the getting it from the amount of the products and getting the amount of reactants. And also we're going to talk about what are yields, what are reaction yields. So we're including all kinds of calculations in here. But one thing I want you to uh, even pause here to check back chapter one to see if you remember a concept of chemical calculation we're learning chapter one that is called dimensional analysis and conversion factor because that is the uh, calculation or that is the basic method we're going to use a lot in this chapter. Again, called conversion factors. If not, if you don't remember anymore, you can go back to chapter one and see and chapter one and chapter two, especially, I think chapter two, I'm sorry, go back to chapter two and see if you still can recall the method called conversion factor. Okay, so with that further ado, let's take a look. In chemistry, the most important concept of involving chemical amount or the amount of some, some, something is called mole, okay, M-O-L-E. Okay, mole, the symbol of mole is M-O-L, is the basic unit for describing how much substance we have, okay, how much substance they have. And we know describing the mass, we use grams, but the, really the amount of chemical substances, we use the mole. So what is a mole? Mole is technically a number, okay? Just like a dozen is 12. Mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is a scientific notation, units of something, okay? One mole is a big number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, okay? 10 to the 23rd. So you can see that this number, not only big, but in the scientific notation can be used to describe everything. One mole of an atom is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of an atoms. One mole of molecule is the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of molecules. And we call this number Avogadro's number. Okay, Avogadro's number. One mole of anything is that many of anything. Just like one dozen of anything is one dozen of anything. One dozen of egg is 12 eggs. One dozen of people is 12 people. Okay, it's a number. But that describes the quantity because now we can count atoms or molecules. And because one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, they are related. So we can, based on that, create these two conversion factors. Okay, one mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by one mole. Okay, these two conversion factors, we're gonna use them in our later stages. And you may wonder where, where this number came from. Okay, where did this number come from? Okay, it is actually came from a definition. It is accurate as an old definition now, is the number of carbon 12 atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12. So if you have 12 grams of carbon 12, which is the most common isotope for carbon, the number of carbon atoms in it is 6.02 times 10 to the 20. We define that as one more. Okay, define as one more. So it is defined based on what? 12 grams of carbon 12, the number of atoms in it. And because of that, okay, this is a quick practice asking you how many eggs is one more? One more of egg is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's kind of silly, but very straightforward. Now, because of that definition of one more, okay, 12 grams of carbon 12, we have a very useful conversion here. That is the mass of one mole of any atoms in grams will numerically equal to the atomic mass. Think about carbon 12, 12 grams, one mole. So if you have an atomic mass of, of something, 
then the numerical weight will equal to that atom in grams of one mole of it. Okay, again, one mole of an atom in grams, the mass will equal to what? To the atomic mass numerically. Okay, carbon 12, atomic mass is 12. One mole, 12 grams. You see that? Now, if you understand the logic, you can understand this very important conversion. That is, for example, nitrogen. The atomic mass is 14.01. Again, from a periodic table, right? Our periodic table is an average atomic mass. So one mole of nitrogen atoms will be 14.01 grams. Okay, 14.01 grams. And we call that, okay, 14.01, let me change that. 14.01 grams. And we call that mass molar mass because the, 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 the mass is grams for one mole or called gram per mole. And we call this 14 grams per mole molar mass. Okay, molar mass. Very similarly, aluminum, the atomic mass is 26.98. So one mole of aluminum will be 26.98 grams. And 26.98 grams per mole of aluminum is called what? The molar mass of it, okay, the molar mass of it. And the same for the potassium. The potassium molar mass is 39.10 grams per mole because the atomic mass is 39.1. So you can see that molar mass and atomic mass, numerically they're the same, but atomic mass, we don't have any unit. Molar mass means what? Grams, how much grams per one mole of that atom. That's why molar mass, the unit is grams per mole. And here shows you one mole of different elements. Okay, you can see you have different quantities, one more of copper, one more of silicon, lead, magnesium, etc. They have different quantities because what? Because their atomic mass is different. But I want to show you one more of some something, how much, like in general, visually, how much there are. Now, we know for molecules, we have talked about atoms. For molecules, molecules are made by atoms, combined, either ionic or covalent. So if you add all the atomic mass together in the molecule formula, then you can calculate a mass called the formula mass of that molecule, of that substance. For example, carbon dioxide, CO2, the formula is CO2. So if we add the atomic mass of C and also two of those oxygen all together, we get a 44.01 and we call that mass the mass of the formula, we call formula mass. The same uh, chloroform, CCL3F. Okay, if we add all the atomic mass, carbon three chlorine and fluorine all together, we get a number 137.5. And that is the mass of that formula. So we call that what? Formula mass. So that's what we use for formula. But again, because the formula mass came from what? Atomic mass, formula mass doesn't have a unit. However, if we apply to the same logic, we know atomic mass and molar mass of an atoms are the same numerically, except the unit. Then we apply the same concept here. The molar mass of a molecule and the formula mass of it is still numerically the same, except the unit. For example, the CO2, which is dead. The formula mass is 44, no unit because it came from atomic mass. But one mole of CO2, now we know will be 44 grams. So 44 gram per mole is the molar mass of CO2. The same, the substance CCL3F, the formula mass is 137.5, but one mole of it, will be 137.15.5 grams. And we call 137.5 grams per mole, the molar mass of that molecule. So you see that? 
not only we can relate atomic mass to molar mass, we can also relate formula mass to molar mass. So the concept of molar mass can apply to both formula and atoms. But remember, they are numerically equal, no matter atomic mass or, or formula mass versus molar mass, they're numerically equal. The most important thing is for molar mass, the unit is grams per mole, means what? That's how many grams per each mole of it. How many is one mole? 6.02 times 10 to 30 of molecules or atoms. So very quickly, what is the molar mass of sulfuric acid? Okay, in order to know molar mass, we know we need to calculate what? Formula mass. H2SO4, if you add H2S and four oxygen together is 98. So the formula mass of sulfuric acid is 98. Then we know the molar mass will be 98 per mole. Okay, 98 per mole. Means what? One mole of sulfuric acid will be 98 grams if you weigh it. Next one. Aspirin has a formula, formula of C9H8O4. They ask you, what is the mass of one mole of aspirin? Okay, one mole of aspirin means what? Molar mass. Molar mass numerically equal to atomic mass. Oh, sorry, formula mass. Okay, the formula mass of aspirin is 180. So the molar mass will be 180 grams. Okay, remember, molar mass is grams per mole. Okay, so after you we studied molar mass, you want to answer, well, why, why, why we use that? What is the molar mass used for? Remember, molar mass is grams per mole. So that means we can relate these two important quantities of a matter, the mass and what? The amount. We said amount is in mole. Okay? The systematic unit for amount is mole. So we're actually relating the mass of something with the mole of something because one mole is how many grams? How many grams is one mole? That's the definition of a molar mass. So with these two, we can relate these two important quantities, the gram of something and the mole of something and the mole of something to the grams of something because molar mass is grams per mole. That is extremely useful. Okay, let's see some practice. Okay, the first practice is asking you, what is the mass of ethane, C2H6, if you have 2.5 mole of it? So for a 2.5 mole sample of ethane, how many grams of it? We know ethane, C2H6, the formula mass is 30. So from 30 formula mass, we can create two conversion factors using molar mass, 30 grams per mole or 30 one mole per 30 grams because they're related. And with those two conversion factors, I can convert 2.5 mole. Right? That's why I ask you to remember or go back to chapter two to see the conversion factor. We use the given unit, 2.5 mole. That's the given. Multiply a conversion, conversion factor. And the conversion factor I chose has the given unit at the bottom. So I can cancel the given unit end up with what? With grams, which is the question you're asking, how many grams? Mole and mole canceled, I got 30, uh, 2.5 times 30 grams, which is 75.0 grams. Okay, two sig figs here, I put two sig figs. I put a decimal there, so these both two numbers are significant. See that? So molar mass, relates grams and mole. If you know the mole, I can convert it to grams. But remember, conversion factor that uses is use the given unit, multiply a conversion factor. The conversion factor you choose with the given unit at the bottom. Next practice, calculate the number of moles in 50 grams of water. We know water, formula mass is 18. So from that 18, we can create two conversion factors, 18 grams per mole, one mole per 18 grams. Now the same, I use the given unit, 50 grams, 
multiply a conversion factor. And that conversion factor has the given unit, 18 grams, at the bottom. One mole over 18 grams. So I can cancel the grams and do the math. 50 divided by 18, remember 18 at the bottom. Okay, 18 is in the bottom. You cancel the grams, you cannot cancel the, the numbers. So 50 divided by 80, 18, the unit will be what? Mole, that's what we're asking. Three sig figs, I keep three sig figs, 2.78 mole. Okay, 2.78. You see that? That's why I ask you to go back to chapter two again. Know how do we use conversion factor in calculations? Next question. Okay, next question. They ask you what is the average mass of one copper atom? Apparently, all the answers given are in grams. See that? So they're basically asking, what do you think the mass of one copper atom weighs in grams? Okay, this question can start with the atomic mass of copper. We know atomic mass of copper is 63.5 in your periodic table. Right? That's the one mass of the mass of copper. But that has no unit. That's not in grams. So you cannot just say, hey, 63.5 grams. It's not. Because the mass, atomic mass of copper, 63.5, is a relative mass. It doesn't have a unit. If you want to put a gram on it, okay, put a gram on it, then you mean what? You're talking about one mole of copper. Remember, numerically, atomic mass equal to molar mass. So if you want to put a gram on it, you have to tell people, hey, this is how much per one mole of copper, not a, not a, not a one gram, not a, one of them, it's one mole of them. So one mole is 63.5 grams. And then you ask yourself, how much is one mole? One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 25. So you use 63.5, again, grams per mole. And one mole is what? One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd number of copper. So it means what? This many copper, the mass is 63.5 grams. Because that's one mole. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, this many copper atoms all together is 63.5 grams. So they ask you if what if what is one copper? Then you do what? Use the mass divided by the number. Right? Total number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So you mass divide by the number, you get an answer. You don't need to do the math because there are multiple choice ask you which one is the closest. You divide by 10 to the 23rd, you will end up with negative 10 to the 22nd or 10 to the 23rd. So the average mass of one copper is extremely small. 1.5 times 10 to the negative 22nd grams. Because 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd altogether is 63.5. Each one is extremely tiny. Next, next. When you have a molecule, okay, when you have a molecule, the subscripts now have a new meaning. Okay, after we learned more, okay, after we have a molecule, we have a formula, the subscript, the formula now keep a new meaning now. Originally, we know if I have a molecule, like a, a formula like this, N2O4. We know this dinitrogen tetroxide is composed of two nitrogen atoms and four hydrogen atoms. That's how the molecule is constructed, right? Two atoms of nitrogen, four atoms of, of oxygen. That's what we know before. But now, after we learned more, we know that each molecule has two nitrogen, four oxygen. It also means 
one mole of N2O4 has two moles of nitrogen and four moles of oxygen. We multiply the, the Avogadro's number to each one. You can change the real number to moles. Remember, mole is number, right? Instead of saying one molecule, because one molecule is too small, we cannot really study it. Instead of saying one molecule, two nitrogen, four hydrogen, oxygen, we can say one mole of N2O4. We have two moles of nitrogen for moles of oxygen. Now, mole is a bigger number. We can study it because we can relate mole to what? To mass. Okay, to mass. Think about that. So after we study more, the molecule numbers, the subscript have a new meaning. It means the moles of atoms of each element present for one mole of that substance. Instead of saying one molecule. Okay, very similar here. Ethane, C2H6. Okay, the subscript is two and six. It means what? It means one mole of C2H6. We have two moles of carbon and six moles of hydrogen. And because of that relation, we can create a conversion factors here now. Here you can see two of them. Again, I'm, I can create more, but here's two of them. One mole, two moles of carbon. One mole, six moles of hydrogen. Do you see that? You can invert them to create the other one, right? So because the mole of the molecule is related to the mole of the atoms, they're related. So I can actually make conversion factors now. One mole of that thing, two moles of carbon. One mole of that thing, six moles of hydrogen because they're related. And take a look at this practice. You'll find how useful that is now, after we know the moles. They ask you how many moles of carbon and how many hydrogen atoms are present in 2.5 moles of ethane? There are two questions. The first question is how many moles of carbon atoms? Okay, again, use the given 2.5 moles of ethane, multiply, the conversion factor, I, don't, I needed no moles of carbon. So one mole of carbon, uh, one mole of ethane is two moles of carbon from the formula, right? One mole of ethane, two moles of carbon. And I put moles of ethane at the bottom because the given unit is 2.5 mole of ethane. So moles of ethane, moles of the ethane canceled. I use 2.5 times two, I get 5.0 grams, of, I'm sorry, moles of carbon because most of that thing canceled. That's the first question. The second question they ask you, how many hydrogen atoms? How many means what? The actual number, their count, how many? How many eggs? Eight eggs, right? How many were count actual number? How do we know the actual number? We know number is related to mole. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the green third. So in order to know the actual number, I need to know moles first. So here's the calculation. I use the given unit, 2.5 mole, multiply the first conversion factor, convert the moles of the ethane to what? To moles of hydrogen. Remember, one mole, six moles of hydrogen. So moles of ethane canceled, we, we get the moles of hydrogen. Then, after we know the moles of hydrogen, I multiply one mole is 6.02 times 10 to 23rd. So I can cancel the mole now. See that the given unit is always in the bottom. The first given unit is moles of ethane. So moles of ethane canceled. And after that, we get moles of hydrogen. So moles of hydrogen will cancel the moles of hydrogen from the second conversion factor. So after that, I get the actual number. All I need to do is do the math. 2.5 times six times six times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. I get the number of hydrogen, 9.0 times 10 to the 24th, this many hydrogen. Okay, this many hydrogen. So now you see that we can actually get the number of atoms or mole of atoms from the formula. With the concept of mole, now we can relate the quantity the amount to mass to number. Okay, to mass to number. Next. Okay, I'm showing a lot of exercise here. I hope you can pause the video. 
digest the exercise and even redo the exercise on the scratch paper so that you own and understand why we do that conversion factor, why we do that sequence of the calculation. Okay, the, the idea is all the same. You want to cancel the given unit using a conversion factor. And the conversion factor is created with two relating factors. Okay, with two relating factors. Next, one mole of aspirin, C9H8O4. They ask you, how many moles of carbon atoms hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms are present. Okay, this is very straightforward. One mole of molecule, we have the formula, so we know one mole of the molecule has nine moles of carbon, eight moles of, of uh, hydrogen, and four moles of oxygen. We know that's related. But what's interesting is the second question. They ask you, for one mole of aspirin, how many grams of carbon are there, right? How much carbon is in there, right? We remember one mole has nine moles of carbon. Okay, we see that from the formula, nine moles of carbon. But nine moles of carbon, how many grams are in there? That's why we, we said it's useful because we can relate everything with the amount, with number, and with the grams. So here's the calculation. One mole. Multiplied by the conversion factor, one mole of the caffeine is nine moles of carbon, right, from the formula. And I put moles of caffeine in the bottom to cancel the moles of caffeine, we get moles of carbon. Then I get moles of carbon, I want to know the grams of carbon. We know carbon is C. The atomic mass of C is what? 12. So one mole of carbon is 12 grams. So now I multiply a second conversion factor, put the moles of carbon, carbon in the bottom, grams on top. I can cancel the mole and get grams. So the calculation simply is one times nine times 12. I get 108 grams of carbon. Again, the second conversion factor came from what? Carbon. What is carbon? C. C. Atomic mass is 12. So the molar mass is what? 12 grams per mole. Remember, whenever you need grams, you think about molar mass because grams are related to mole. Grams per mole is molar mass. How do we know molar mass? Atomic mass or formula mass? Numerically, they're the same. So keep that in mind. Again, I use this practice and to get yourself familiar with the conversion between them and know what units are related to another. Okay, so here is the brief summary of what we talk about about conversion. If conversion first is the definition of mole, the Avogadro's number relates mole and actual number. We know mole is a number, but mole indicates something. So the Avogadro's number relates the actual number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd to mole. So these are the two conversion factors we can create based on the definition of mole. The second relation is, like I said again, molar mass. Molar mass relates what? Grams and mole. If you want to know grams, or if you want to know more, think about, can you do that via molar mass? Because molar mass is the only one that relates grams and mole. How do we know the molar mass? For atoms, atomic mass. How do we know the molar mass of formula? Formula mass, by adding an atomic mass together. And finally, from the formula, we can also know the moles of each element within the compound by looking at the subscript, just like we did C2H6. One mole, two moles of carbon, one mole, six moles of hydrogen. And that is determined by what? By the formula, by the subscript. The numbers are related, so mole is also related. And relating moles are even more important than relating numbers because, like I said, we cannot study individual molecules. We're studying a group of molecules. Okay, here's another practice. Like I said, I will leave a few for you to work on, but I will talk about most of them. But I hope you can pause the video and study, study these 
practice again and again so you get an idea about the conversion. Okay, the question is ask you how many grams of nitrogen are present in 0.1 grams of caffeine? Okay, 0.1 grams of caffeine. We know nitrogen and caffeine. Okay, nitrogen and caffeine, they're related by what? By the formula, right? One nitrogen, four caffeine, one caffeine, four nitrogen atoms. So one mole of caffeine, four moles of nitrogen. So that's the only thing that relates caffeine and nitrogen, right? One caffeine, four nitrogen, one mole of caffeine, four moles of nitrogen. Why we care that? Because they're asking, they're, you're giving caffeine, but they're asking how many nitrogen. But think about it, if you're relating the moles, but you're not giving any moles, you're not asking any moles, you're giving grams, they're asking grams. So that means what? You need to convert between grams and moles. What relate grams and mole? Molar mass relating grams. Mole. So if you know that, here is the calculation based on the logic. First, I convert the grams of caffeine into moles by multiplying the molar mass of caffeine. Molar mass of caffeine is 194.2, adding all the molar mass, the atomic mass together. So after grams and grams cancel, we get the moles of caffeine. Then I know one mole of caffeine four moles of nitrogen, I get moles of nitrogen. And then nitrogen is an atom. So instead of the molar mass, instead of the atom, so the four molar mass of nitrogen is basically atomic mass of nitrogen. One mole of nitrogen is 14 grams of nitrogen. Do you see that? We know they are related in moles, but they're not asking, we're not given in moles, we're not asking moles, we're asking grams, we're giving in grams. So you have to convert grams to mole, relate the moles, and then convert the mole back to grams because they're asking you grams. Okay, again, the logic, convert the grams of caffeine using the molar mass of caffeine into the moles of caffeine. And then we know the moles of caffeine related to the moles of nitrogen because we're here, the question asks us nitrogen. And then cancel the moles of the nitrogen, convert to grams of nitrogen using what? Using the molar mass of nitrogen. Nitrogen is N, 14 grams per mole. So the math will be again, 0.1 times one times four times 14, then divide by 194.2. Okay, just do the numbers. Don't cancel the numbers. Then you get 0 0.029 grams two sig figs because we're given two sig figs. All right. Okay, so here is the uh, practice. And for you asking you the number of aspirin here and also calculate if all these three substances is 100 grams, uh, which one has the greatest number of atoms. And here is the question asking uh, different amounts of these grams of different amount of these elements. Uh, which one has more atoms, which one has the least amount of atoms. And here is asking you, uh, giving you the sample of these four substances, which one has the most number of oxygen and the least number of oxygen. Again, these are some comprehensive practices summarizing all these topics we've studied so far. Okay, I hope again, you use them as a practice. I supplied key for you in the note area. If you don't understand, study the keys and practice again without the key. If you study the key, you still don't understand, again, you can feel free to ask me questions. So I will explain to you. But I hope you to master these all these concept of conversion factors, especially like we said here. Okay, these three conversions. Mole relates to number. Mole relates to mass, grams. And also the formula relates to the mole of the molecule and the mole of the elements. So depending on what we're asking, you will need to relate these units and create conversion factors of it. Okay, conversion factor. So that is the first half of this chapter. Again, of course, this chapter is kind of like I'm going quick, but involves a lot, a lot, a lot of practice. Because calculation, you can only get better via, via what? Practice. Okay, so we'll 
pause here, stop here, and uh, we'll talk about the calculations using these concepts, but apply that to chemical equations, we apply to a reaction in our second part. Okay, by now I'll see you in the second part of chapter six.